All right, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can let particle flow uh, define how this object is going to deform and break. And we're not going to break it before, we're going to let particle flow define all of that. So what I've got in this scene so far is just the uh, the original geometry. I've made a copy of it, now it's hidden, so if I just unhide it and hide the original one, you see that they're exactly the same uh, geometry, so now the two of them are visible. And uh, that's kind of the idea. So one of them is called volume and the other one is called explosion. The reason uh, why I do this is because I need one that will define the volume in which I'm going to create particles and the other one will be the deformed mesh and and you cannot use the same geometry to do that so you need to, you need a clone so that's uh, that's why I did that right now we have just got the volume and I'm gonna use that as my starting point and I'm just gonna move aside and we're gonna bring in uh, particle flow and the way that we do this I'm gonna start exactly the same way we're gonna create a particle flow like we did before and uh, if I press play we have our simulation and that's pretty much it I'm gonna delete the um, the spin, I don't need the spin anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. But I'm going to leave the cube and I'm going to leave all of this here. I'm going to make this a very uh, visible kind of color so that we can know uh, what's going on. We're going to leave the, sh the shape and we're going to grab the grid. And the grid operator is based out of a uh, icon that is inside of the 3ds Max environment. So if I just go here and say grab the birth grid, you'll see that this uh, icon can be moved up or moved down. So this is the, uh, the icon itself. So I'm just going to move it down like so so that it's uh, closer to the ground. And I'm going to fill this space, or the space that the spiller occupies, I'm going to fill it with the with particles. So I can change the icon size here. I'll make the height a bit higher, something like that. I'll move the width so it's a bit wider, something like this. And what we have is a full distribution of particles on this uh, pillar. Not that interesting so far, so what I'll do is I'll grab the birth grid and there's an uh, option here called restrict by mesh volume. So I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to pick the reference geometry and in this case here I'm just going to grab the volume or the pillar volume here and you'll see that now the particles will be within that uh, volume. I can now hide that volume, I don't need it anymore so I'm just going to hide it and you'll see that what we have now is the particles are just falling down like so. We get a kind of a good movement, and that's good. But the um, what I'd like to do, and also just want to mention that inside the uh, the vol inside of the pillar, it's empty. So that's why we get some empty spaces there. I can also say here, delete internal particles. And if I just calculate the mesh again, actually they're still there because they're probably close to the surface. But what we can do now is I'm going to grab the uh, the cube or the shape, and I'm going to reduce this a little bit. And also in the grid, there's an option here called random vertical offset. So I'm going to turn that on, and if if I say calculate mesh again, you'll see that they all have a small offset in there. And now if I just press play, we're going to see that they're falling down like so. Make them a bit bigger so that they kind of uh, start to interact a bit more, uh, f uh, a bit faster. And now we get that movement like so. So we get a kind of, a, and I can also bring in the alternate lateral offset and create that volume. So it's going to be, actually it's going to be a bit more uh, a bit more like so yeah you see that we have a kind of a, a, a pattern that will give a bit more um, interpenetration so if I press play now way too much interpenetration reduce the cube size press play and now we have a movement that's a bit more interesting okay so that's good so now that we've got that as a general movement this is what we would like to use for our simulation if you want to go faster now we have a lot of uh, well we have kind of a reasonable amount of, of particles. I can go back to the grid here and I'll say the birth grid size, I'll, let's say I'll make it 15 and the cube size here I'll make it something like 10 and uh, I will refresh the volume and make it uh, something a bit bigger, something like that. If I press play you'll see that we kind of get the same kind of simulation but with bigger particles. The the smaller the particles, the longer it's going to take to simulate. The the but uh, you know the more refined will be the uh, the final simulation. But if we have a big uh, structure and we want to break it into bigger chunks, something like that will work fine. I can even make it bigger if I want to, but that's this one here is going to be uh, perfect. And the sh shape here, let's make it something like a precise number so that we can remember something like ten, and we have our simulation like so. So now that we have our general movement for the particle system, I'm just going to close this down and I'm going to bring in the pillar that I want to use for the explosion. So this pillar here is now um, a copy of my original one that defines the volume and now it's not de being deformed but my particles define how I want it to move. 
So there's a nice operator, a nice modifier here called the particle skinner. So I'm going to enable that. And the particle skinner allows you to turn any particle system into a skin uh, or uh, into a bone that will define this, how this object will be deformed. It's, it's uh, treating it it's treating the deformation as a skin deformation. So I'll say particle flow system. I want to add the one that we have here. So I'm going to grab this one. Our particle flow events is going to be good for now. The distance of influence in this case here we add something like 15. So let's say 50 will be good or 40 will be enough I think. It's just to define how particles uh, influence around them and we're going to leave the rest uh, as it is. So if I activate the skinning and press play, you'll see that this geometry will be deformed exactly the same way as the particles are falling down. Unfortunately, or fortunately I would say, um, this the, a pillar like this should not be melting like that. So fortunately, we can define how, we're going to, we, how we are going to break this into pieces. It takes a bit more time to simulate the skinning, but you'll see that we can get really good results out of that. So what I'll do is I'll turn off activate skinning. I'm going to go at the bottom here, and you see that there's a section called rip surface apart. You have the def you can define how much you want how you want to rip surface apart either by binding break we're going to talk about that a bit later distance change offset or none so it was at none we're going to say to offset and whenever something uh, a particle will move by ten percent that's when we're going to start to rip the surface apart so if I go back to this and say activate every time you change something here you better turn off activate skinning and turn it back on so if I turn it back on here and I press play you'll see that it's going to take a bit longer to simulate but you'll see that now this this here is going to start to crack and all the particles will bring the vertices because it's, it's going to break the geometry and the vertices that are attached to a specific particle will be brought with uh, with this particle as a uh, as a rigid body so that's how you can get this to simulate as a uh, as a set of fragmented uh, rigid bodies that's going to collide with uh, that's going to collapse with the particle system so of course now that we've got this done I'm going to turn off activate skinning for now and I will turn off the uh, the, vo the the volume itself we're going to go back to it in a few minutes what I like to do is I would like to add some details like we did a bit before and what I'd like to do is every time one of those particles enter in collision with another one we want to create some si some kind of a, a small explosion so what I'll do is I'll take the event like we did before I'm just gonna copy it and paste it as an instance and I'm not gonna use the birth grid I'm gonna delete that but I'm gonna continue to display the exactly in the same way and now what I wanna do is I wanna test if there's any intercollision between those particles so there's an operator here called inter or MP inter collision so I'm gonna drag that in I'm gonna put it below the world and I'm gonna connect it to this here so whenever there's a collision in the current event if ever it collides it's gonna go here it's gonna to continue to simulate so right now nothing is gonna really happen but if I want to see if it works I'm just gonna grab this and say make unique and we're gonna change it from yellow to some kind of red if I press play now you see that as the particles start to collide with each other they turn red because they go into this event here so we know that after there's a collision they go in that in that event so that's perfect we know it's working so I'll copy back this color and paste it back in so that it's continuing in the same color doesn't really matter but you know we'd like to continue with a certain consist consistency so as we are colliding at the exact moment I would like to spawn, spawn particles I'll bring in a spawn operator instead of spawning by travel distance we're going to keep it at once and I want to spawn more particles let's say a hundred and I'll bring in a display operators, operator so that we can see them I'm going to connect that to the here we are going again to display it as lines and the spawn here uh, the, the inner at speed let's say we want that to be uh, you know 150 percent so it's going to go a bit faster uh, variation 50 whoops 50 and again divergence we're going to make it 180 and we're going to see what's happening now so he said now as they get as they explode they we get the uh, the inner the, uh, the 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 particles being emitted the spawn here maybe the speed is a bit too strong so let's say 80 percent something like this press play and now we're going to get something like that and it's uh, pretty good so the variation we're going to make it 80 percent the more variation you have the better it's going to be so 90 percent of variation I'm going to press play again and you'll see we're going to get some variation in there as well so same thing as we did before uh, it would probably be a good idea to bring in a force so bring in a force in here and we're going to put a, um, a gravity in here as well so put in the gravity and 
we are going to add that force here where oops grab the gravity here and make it something like 20 percent and now we're going to get our particles just to explode and then start to fall down as well so now that we got that um, I'm not going to go too much into deep uh, we, we've seen it in the first part where we added some details and all of that but now we know that whenever there's a collision we're going to see those particles if I turn off the display of these specific particles so that we don't see them and we bring back the um, the explosion volume and I do enable the skinning again so what we're going to get now is as soon as they start to break apart we are going to start to see particle emerge and add details as well so when we have those collision it's going to create some explosion so that's how you can create some pretty interesting effect uh, with this and um, I'm just going to pause it as you can see when it do when it's doing the skinning and the breaking of the uh, particles dynam uh, of the geometry dynamically it takes it takes a bit more time to uh, to simulate but I did do a um, a preview of this so previews and I did this here with my particle flow refine that's it here actually go back here yeah refined open it up I think it's the right one so you'll see you know that of course it was the other one so I'll bring in the uh, refine and skinned open it up Oh, I thought I did. I thought I did add details in there. Anyway, so we're, we're fine. We're, we're good with that. The idea is to show you that the um, the skinning is is uh, broken here. I didn't have the uh, when I did the preview. I didn't have the uh, the details. But you get the idea. You can add as much detail as you want in there. I'll just let it load uh, for a second and play it back after, like so. So if I press play, you see that it breaks into pieces, like so. So that's kind of the uh, the workflow to break uh, a an object using particles, and you define the movement with particles, and then you skin your objects to the to your objects to these particles, and you let it uh, happen. So now we're going to jump a bit further. We're going to do the same type of thing, but with the bridge, and with the bridge, we're going to add some interconnections between the 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 between the particles, so that we can create some kind of a kind of a, a soft body or rope kind of simulation with uh, particle flow.